Hi, I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Friday, February the 23rd. Wet enough for you yet? It's, it's pouring like crazy out there. Anyway, on to the news. Political filing continues at the state capitol. Nothing earth-shaking going on. It does appear that the Democratic Party is going to field some candidates in districts where it hadn't fielded some in the past. Four people running for 2nd District Congress is a pretty good start. Alan Hughes, president of state AFL-CO, is going to challenge a sitting Republican down in the Hot Springs area. All these are good things. Doesn't mean they'll win, but you can't win if you don't run, and it looks like more people are running. The uh, legislature's not meeting today. They'll resume Monday on the budget session. Good that they don't meet because when they do meet, they seem to get into mischief and do things they shouldn't do. A pretty good example was yesterday's special hurry-up action to add Arkansas's private school parents to the beneficiaries of a national savings program that had been only for colleges. The federal government changed this program to allow you to put money into savings accounts to apply to K-12 through education. But Arkansas is going to make it into essentially a voucher program. We're giving people a $5,000 a year tax deduction that they can put into these programs and then pay private school tuition. It's essentially a voucher program. The federal government doesn't let you get a deduction for putting money in the program for K-12 education. You, the earnings are tax-free, but you don't get that front-end deduction that Arkansas is giving. Bad policy is going to cost the state money at the same time. We're not paying parole officers, not paying for special education, and turning down other good needs. And speaking of wasting money, yesterday there was a piece of special business and joint budget where they voted $800,000 for a panic button phone app program in the state schools. School safety is very popular now. Governor Asa Hutchinson had vetoed this spending a year ago. <clears throat> Said if schools wanted to have this, they could pay for it. The program has been criticized by security officials. It's had some problems in its implementation where it's been done. They seem to be associated with a very powerful lobbying group. Perhaps that's why they were able to get out a joint budget yesterday. But here's the thing. Last year, Governor Hutchinson announced a big state program to join a first net emergency responders program paid for by AT&T. They're going to develop phone apps to better communicate with first responders. Do we really need to spend $800,000 when we're ignoring all those other needs? I don't think so, but uh, the other people just don't seem to have the right lobbyists, perhaps. Big news in Washington today, the Conservative Political Action Committee is meeting and the lead speaker was Donald Trump and it was quite a performance. He threw red meat, he threw whole dead bodies to this audience and they love what they got. The main thing was to beat up on immigrants and Donald Trump did that with a speech that whose nativism I think would have been right at home in 1930s Germany when they were stirring the fires of nativism and nationalism there. Same sort of thing here. Uh, Leslie Rutledge, the Arkansas Attorney General, gave a similar nativist speech decrying sanctuary cities, not that they've caused much problem in Arkansas. She also suggested that people who disagree with her don't believe in God and don't love the United States. How about that? Maybe we ought to go somewhere else. UAMS was on the agenda of a UA Board of Trustees committee meeting this morning. There was an update on their financial situation, which is difficult. The good news is they say they can meet a, a budget deficit of only $38 million this year instead of $72 million. A $38 million deficit isn't very good news, but I guess it is against $72. They're going to do this by $11 million in salary cuts. The monthly report this month shows, however, that the people who remain on pay are getting big 9% pay raises, and I suspect that'll raise some questions somewhere. Here's a piece of good news for downtown Little Rock. The construction barriers are up in the 200 block of West Capitol Avenue, and the work has begun on what will turn the old Hall and Davidson buildings, a couple of historic office buildings, into a new 112-room boutique hotel. It'll be an AC hotel operated by Marriott. Mark Stoll, the mayor of Little Rock, asked people today in his uh, email communication to participate in a survey about whether the UA Little Rock should start a football team and a marching band to go with it. I judge from the response that we're getting on the Arkansas blog to it that most people think it's not a very smart idea financially. The school can't get this done without an enormous contribution of private expenditures, which at this point doesn't seem to be on the horizon. But this is a serious study. We'll see what it'll find. I personally am in favor of a band. I don't know if the football team necessarily makes sense. Here's a note from the Wall Street Journal today, a photograph taken in an Arkansas State Capitol pro-immigration rally some years ago was taken by one of these Russian troll farms and uh, photoshopped and made into an anti-immigrant image that they sent out on Facebook and was seen hundreds of thousands of times in America during the 2000 election, 2016 election campaign. So Arkansas was part of the disinformation campaign that helped elect Donald Trump since we were all for him. I guess that's not a bad thing. The gun control debate continues. I think the teenagers in Florida are having the better end of it. The 
the pro-gun forces are trying to make a lot of hay, and, and, and it's worth looking at that that uh, a deputy on duty at the school fell down on the job and, and warnings about the troubled student weren't acted upon, although I'm not sure what you can do to stop somebody from buying a gun if they don't have a criminal record and have just said some things. At this point, the NRA opposes a red flag law that would allow you to take guns from people who've exhibited potential for using them wrongly. But in any event, a teenager down there said we ought to call AR-15s Marco Rubios because they're both so easy, so easily purchased. Pretty good line. Laura Ingram, the uh, conservative commentator, says that these young kids just aren't speaking respectfully enough about their elders. Imagine Laura Ingram talking about civil discourse. What a laugh. I'm resisting, as you can tell. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back next week.